Hi, I'm Gary Anderson, ex-technical director for Jordan Grand Prix and Stuart Grand Prix. I now do Formula One technical consultancy for Autosport. And uh, we're here at Lola's wind tunnel facility in Huntingdon with Chris Saunders, who's Lola's aero consultant, and Mark Williams, who used to work for Lola, then McLaren, is now a motorsport consultant. And we're here to bring you the sort of five points that make your wind, would make your wind tunnel program successful. So I think it starts with the model. Mark, down to you there. Absolutely, Gary. The most important thing is your model's versatile. You need to plan ahead, think through your program, and make sure you can plug and play all your parts. Chris, that, that sounded a bit right? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, preparation is paramount. Um, you end up with a, a run list that uh, you need to stick to pretty carefully, although you do need to be aware that you can divert at any time, but start with the plan. Um, and then come prepared with all the model parts that you need. And uh, generally speaking, I, I guess you could say it's a bit like having a big pile of Lego that you bolt on and off the model and uh, check the aerodynamic response from those parts. And so you've got your model ready for the wind tunnel, and it goes. You know, what do you do? What does the wind tunnel do? How fast does it run? What sort of forces Well, uh, this tunnel, um, I mean, normally speaking, tunnels, low speed tunnels, uh, run up to maybe 60, 80 meters per second, which is perhaps 150, getting on for 200 miles an hour. Um, if you take Formula One, for example, the regulations are such you're not allowed to run more than 50 meters per second, which I think is a, about 120 miles an hour. Um, that's, that's regulated maximum wind speed. And why would you regulate that? What's, what's the, the reason for it's it? It's about cost. It's all about cost. So the, the wind tunnel model is restricted to 60% in Formula 1. In this case, the model behind us is a 45% scale model. It just happens to be that size because it's a suitable size for the scale of, for the size of the wind tunnel. But if you go back to F1, you're only allowed to run 60% scale models at 50 metres per second. And the idea is to keep the cost down because if you didn't, you'd be running full size at full speed and then that, the costs are just prohibited. Well, Mark, you end up coming here, then you've got your base model in there, and obviously it's about optimising it. I mean, the base model is just like, I always relate it to starting with a breeze block. You don't carve a car out of that, you try and make it better just from that model. Well, the key thing is you've got a programme. There's various aspects of the car you want to work on. You want to work on your front wing, your underbody, your rear wing, whatever it is. It could be mirrors. You have to have a plan. You have to have some idea of where you're going, and you pre-make the parts. You bring them here, you run through your list of programme, and you get your results. And you know, we hear a lot of talk about flow structure, as if it sort of never happened before, but that it means sort of everything's so interrelated with everything else. If you develop a new front wing end plate, it can affect the rear wing. Absolutely, you can't do it independently. You can't really have a front team and a rear team because the rear team needs to know what they're working with and that comes from the front. And the front works first. So start there and work your way back. And then after you've got that running, obviously there's a load of numbers that each, each component you test it generates this load of numbers. Absolutely, so they come out of, uh, the data comes out of the wind tunnel um, in a raw unit, so kilos, kilogram meters if it's a, a, a pitching moment or torque. Um, and in simplistic terms, if uh, you know this run with this wing has got this amount of downforce and then you do another run that's different, it's got more downforce, then you know, in sim simply speaking, the car will be quicker on the track. And then you go through and produce a, what's called an aero map, which is really the maps the car, all the different loads at different rate heights, different steering. Absolutely, different so for every single configuration of every component on the car, um, the um, race engineers will need to be able to set the car up at the track. So we map those in the wind tunnel. Once the car is finished, or whatever new part might be, it has to be mapped so that you know that um, the guys at the track will know how to set the car up from the wind tunnel data. And then it goes to you, Mark, you have a bucket loads of data. How do you decide what bits to make for the real car? At the end of the day, the real cars moving through a ride height, pitch, your regime. So you know pretty much what that is. So that's what you try and replicate in the tunnel, as Chris was saying. So you have all this data. You then have to take it, do a little bit of simulation, and see what parts give you the best overall lap time. Because it's not all about just one corner. It's what works for the entire lap. And that's how you choose your parts. And during that period of deciding and getting those bits to the track, the wind tunnel development's just going on in the background. Wind tunnel development's perpetual. Non-stop. It just runs every day. And all you do is you take a snapshot of the car in its best configuration and you go and make it for the track. The wind tunnel guys are carrying on ready for the next slice of development. I mean, generally speaking, you know, you'll be targeting an aero package for three or four races in the future, but it, you know, it takes a long time to, to have the thought process of the parts and then go through the wind tunnel testing, the CFD, the final manufacturer of the parts, the, um, 
and then you have to quantify in simulation, then it will finally get to the circuit. So generally you would have a, a track that you're aiming for with any given aerodynamic update. So the parts you just develop in the wind tunnel it predicts, your simulation predicts two tenths of a second, you go to the track, it gives you that two tenths of a second, you're home and dry. Happy days. Happy Very. Days. <laughs>